For our devotion period tonight, we want to examine Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm. This is a psalm uh, showing trust and confidence in God and his ability to guide, protect, and give for his flock. This psalm not only was able to strengthen David and encourage him, but tonight we hope that it's an encouragement to us. And it will show us how God is out in front of us. He's leading, he's guiding, he's protecting. We have nothing to fear. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. Verse number one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Everyone has someone leading them. We think about fathers and husbands in the home, how they lead the family. Or we think about your favorite teacher in class and how they're able to lead the classroom in the way that it ought to go. Well, here in Psalm 23, God is the shepherd. And David is his sheep. And there is nothing more that David desires more than what God is able to give. God is our leader. This is not the only time that our Lord is referred to as the shepherd. Moses refers to God as a shepherd in Genesis chapter 49 and verse number 24. Isaiah in his account in chapter 40 and 11 refers to God as a shepherd. Jesus says in the New Testament he is the good shepherd. John chapter 10 verses 14 and 15, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. And am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. We should want nothing more than what our shepherd has to offer. I shall not want means, Lord, you supply my need. I shall not want. Lord, I desire nothing more than what you have to give. This is a reflection on past times when God was there for David. We think about all the great things that David did for God, but there were times where he absolutely needed him. And it was not always easy, but yet God was there. And this gives David confidence going forward that God will be with him no matter the situation. The great shepherd leads his sheep to paths of rest and righteousness. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Today, for Christians, Jesus has promised us rest. Matthew 11, 8, or 28 through 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus promises for the Christian today rest, and that he's not asking us to do more than we are able The best shepherd restores his soul. David here has his soul renewed and sustained by Yahweh. When we think about the term restoring or restores, we think about rescuing the lost. The best shepherd puts us on paths of righteousness. Now the history of time throughout the Bible and even after the Bible, there have been great men that have achieved great things because they were led by God. Think about Moses. He was able to establish a new nation. Think about the perseverance of Job and how because he retained his faith in God, he ultimately prospered, even though he lost everything. Paul fought hard. He fought the good fight for Christianity and was able to make an impact on the world. Why? Because he was led by God. And God never left these people, and he will never Leave us. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5. Let your conversations be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor 
forsake thee. Our God leads from the front. The best shepherd provides protection for his sheep. Verses 4 through 6. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even when you are in an uncomfortable place, with God as your shepherd, you may find comfort. All of us truly are all under the shadow of death. One day you will take your last breath. God's presence overcomes the worst of fear and anxiety and evil things and things that can harm us. God's protection is greater. God's presence is greater. Through these dark places, the sheep could travel without having to worry about angry and hungry wolves and bears coming to get them because their shepherd was there to protect them. The rod which was able to smite any attacker and the staff that was able to prod the sheep to where they ought to go and be able to get them any time that they came out of the fold and to bring them right back. In the midst of our enemies, the great shepherd anoints us. The great shepherd in the midst of our enemies is able to provide comfort and peace and strength. He knows where we stand. He knows where our weaknesses lie. And with him we are strengthened. The house of God is of goodness and mercy. The sheep will never have to worry about going shepherdless. And for the Christian tonight... We don't have to worry about it either. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What a powerful Psalm 23. The Lord is our leader. He is our shepherd. The Lord gives rest to his sheep. He knows the needs of the sheep. The Lord will protect his sheep. His sheep have nothing to fear. He is always there with them. So the question remains here tonight. Will you allow the great shepherd to lead you? He will give you rest. He will give you protection. He will supply all of your needs. All that he asks is that you come and seek him. Tonight, will you come? Tonight, will you join the flock and be led by the great shepherd? If there's a need tonight, I pray that you will come as we stand and as we sing.